So when you do ANOVAs, there is another table that you create or that your computer program will create for you that summarizes a lot of the key information about your statistical test. It's called a source table. So we got a column that we'll call source. And there, one source is between the groups, so that's the means here. And another source is within the group, so that's like uh, this 10 and this 10 and this 10. And those are the two sources, but we're also going to have a total. So there's the source, and then there's the different kinds of things that are associated with each. One is the sums of squares. Another is degrees of freedom. Another is the mean square. Then we have an F and our p-value. This is F statistic and our p-value. Uh, the sums of squares here is, uh, so if we think about our variance formula, sums of squares just refers to the stuff on top, the, the sum of the squared deviations. That's what sums of squares means. So you could actually rewrite the variance formula as sums of squares over degrees of freedom. Um, and so um, in the mean square, mean square, that actually is the same as variance. So it's a little extra confusing that we're taking familiar things and putting new labels on them, but statisticians love to do that. They did not set this up for students, so we could call it mean square like so. So the mean square is the variance. And the variance is the sums of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. So all of the components for your variance estimates are here. Um, and then this is where we'll put the F statistic that we calculate. And here's the p-value for that F statistic. So in this case, the variance between groups, we calculated that earlier, as 4,400. The variance within groups, we calculated that earlier as 100, right? And the F statistic, its formula is the variance between divided by the variance within. So now we could also say, rewrite that as the mean square between divided by the mean square within. So this is exactly the same as this, except for this is the table that you're going to get from SPSS or whatever program you're using. And it's going to call these mean squares rather than variances. And notice these are mean squares because um, they're these squared deviations. And it's the mean. It's the average of, average of them because you're dividing them by the degrees of freedom, which is, a, a, remember, basically the sample size. That's why it's an average, the mean square. So we already calculated the uh, variance between. Um, and we can calculate the degrees of freedom uh, between really easily. In fact, we did that earlier when we calculated the variance between these three means. Right, and degrees of freedom is n minus 1, and there was 1, 2, 3 means. So this degrees of freedom equals n, the number of groups, minus 1. 3 groups minus 1, so that equals 2. So there's 2 degrees of freedom between. And we could calculate these sums of squares from scratch, from the raw data. And I'll have a different video that, that explains how to do that. But for our purposes right now, it's really easy to calculate this because we already know the, the variance, the mean square, and the degrees of freedom. Since we already know the variance and the degrees of freedom, we can just plug our values into our formula. So remember, mean square equals sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom. Right, we got that right here. Um, mean square is 4,400. And sums of squares is what we're trying to solve for. And divided by the degrees of freedom is 2. So we can just multiply both of these sides by 2. These cancel out. And so our sums of squares is going to be 8,800. And this is between groups. Remember, this is with our uh, three different means. So next, let's figure out the um, degrees of freedom and, and sums of squares within. Right, so uh, we know our, our mean square within 
equals 100. Um, and our degrees of freedom within, we already figured that out before, is the degrees of freedom of this group plus the degrees of freedom of this group plus the degrees of freedom of this group. So that is um, n1 and 1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1 plus n3 minus 1. And they all had 33, so this is going to be 32 plus 32 plus 32, 96. So we have 96 degrees of freedom uh, within our groups. So now to calculate the sums of squares, we put the sums of squares within divided by the degrees of freedom within, which was 96. We multiply both sides by 96 because we're trying to get sums of squares by itself. And so sums of squares equals 9,600. All right, looking pretty good. So, um, and then the total sums of squares is just these two added together. 18,400. The degrees of freedom total is these two numbers added together, 98. And notice there's another way to get this degrees of freedom total. So you could get the sums of squares total by uh, with, with the raw data, which again, I'll show in a later video. Uh, but the, for the degrees of freedom total, this is actually pretty easy too. What you do is you take the total sample size, so you add the sample size for each of our three groups, and you get our, our total sample size, capital N, so lowercase n for subgroups, capital N for the total sample size. Uh, and then we have 99. So the degrees of freedom for the overall test um, is capital N minus 1. So that's 99 minus 1, 98, which is what we have here. So if you know the total sample size, it's really easy to get the degrees of freedom total because it's the total sample size minus 1. The F statistic is really easy to calculate. And we actually did it earlier, but if we have our source table, Right, we want to do the variance between divided by the variance within. So mean square between divided by the mean square within, right, because they're the same. So it's 4,400 divided by 100. So our F is going to be 44, which is exactly what we got earlier, of course. And the p-value is something that you don't determine when you're doing these tests by hand. But if you use a statistical program, right, this is how you're always going to decide whether or not you're going to re reject your null hypothesis. And in this case, our p-value is less than 1 in 1,000. So that is going to be smaller than our alpha of 0.05 will reject the null hypothesis. This test is statistically significant. Um, and we would, um, because this omnibus ANOVA is, is statistically significant, we rejected the null hypothesis we'd go ahead and do some kind of post hoc test to tell us which of these means are different from one another. The effect size for an omnibus ANOVA is called eta squared, the Greek letter eta squared. And its formula is the sums of squares between divided by the sums of squares total. The sums of squares between divided by the sums of squares total. So notice, this is all the sums of squares that exist in this data set. And eta squared is going to tell us of all of this variability in our data set, what percent of it or proportion of it was between the groups instead of within. So remember, this is the variability within the groups. This is the variability between the groups. Right? So between the groups tells us how much the tests differed depending on what class they were in. Right? Within each class, different students did better and worse. We're not interested in that right now. What we want to know now is how much being in a different class affected uh, class difficulty. So to calculate this, we just plug in sums of squares between. So eta squared equals 8, 8, 0, 0, divided by sum of squares total, 18, 4, 0, 0. And that is dot zero dot four eight. So almost half of the of all of the variability of all the sums of squares in this data set was between these exams. And so just like with Cohen's D, uh, Cohen provided some guidelines for interpreting effect sizes um, 
So a small effect would be an eta squared of about dot zero ones, who are way bigger than that. A medium or moderate effect size would be dot zero six, so we're actually way larger than that as well. And a large effect size would be dot one four. Uh, and our effect size is substantially larger than that as well. So this kind of an effect size, uh, eta squared, shows up for a few other tests and sometimes it's called R squared in multiple regression, or it's called multiple R squared. Um, and oftentimes it's called the percent of variance accounted for. Notice if the total and the sums of squares between are the same, then there's no variation within the group. All the variation in the whole data set is between the groups. So the maximum value you can get for an eta squared or an r squared is one. And again, for that, there's no variation within at all. All the variation is between the groups. On the other hand, all of the variation could be just within the groups and if all three means are identical to one another, then there's no variation between the groups. You'd have a zero up here. And in that case, the r squared or the eta squared would be zero. So uh, the percent of variance accounted for ranges from zero to one. Um, and in practice, especially in psychology, it's unlikely that you'll get effect sizes this large. They do show up sometimes, but you'll notice accounting for about 14% of the overall variability is considered a large effect size.